Good morning students, this is Reema, your biology educator from WeLearning. So as you know that WeLearning is an online educational platform where we strive to provide quality education for all. So to get all the benefits from our channel, do subscribe to it and also visit to our website that is www.v-learning.in where you will be getting all the PDF notes of all these topics, the recorded, uh, the pre-recorded videos, the live classes and also the animated videos so let's begin today's session so in this session what we are going to learn we have started with our chapter that is chapter number seven right and we have learned in our last class about the morphology and anatomy of the artwork so in today's class we are going to continue with the next topic that is the morphology and anatomy of cockroach and this is your lecture number four so let's begin today's session without any delay Yes. So when we think about cockroach, what is the color of the cockroach? We see cockroaches at our home, right? So which color they are? They are generally of black or brownish in color, right? So you have learned in the chapter number four about the animal um, kingdom where you have seen that there are different phylums, right? So can you recall that which phylum the cockroach belongs to? The cockroach belongs to the phylum that is Yes, it belongs to phylum orthopoda and it comes to the class insecta, right? And which kingdom, uh, which kingdom it is? It is uh, belonging to the kingdom animalia, isn't it? So these are all the taxonomic classification first we should know. So the cockroach, which phylum it belongs to? That is the butterfly, cockroach, all the insects belongs to the phylum orthopoda, right? So it belongs to phylum so it belongs to phylum orthopoda. Now which class it belongs to? It belongs to class insecta. Then which kingdom, uh, which kingdom it belongs to? It, king, it belongs to kingdom animalia, right? So it belongs to kingdom Animalia. Now, what is the scientific name of the cockroach? The most common cockroach which we see in India is the Periplaneta americana. So, it belongs to genus Periplaneta. Right? And it should be underlined. The scientific name always should be written in italics and which should be underlined, right? And it belongs to a species. This species it belongs to Americana. Now, why it is written as Americana? Did it come from or it came from America? So the uh, thing is, uh, the cockroach actually it came from Africa. From Africa, it went to Americana. How? came to India. So after the independence, what happens? India used to import the wheat from the America, okay, from the other countries. So along with the wheat, it came to the India. So uh, the most common cockroach which we find in India is Periplaneta americana. This is the most common uh, species which uh, we see in India. So they will be generally black or brown in color and they will be uh, larger in size, right? Now, these cockroaches, are they omnivorous or herbivorous or carnivorous? So, they uh, feed on both plants and animal food. So, they are basically omnivorous. They are omnivorous. <clears throat> Now, uh, you will see that uh, at the night time when you go to the kitchen and all, we, um, you will see cockroaches, right, uh, in your houses. Um, why they don't come out during the daytime? They especially come out at the night time, okay? So, they are nocturnal. That is, they can see during the night time. So, they are nocturnal. That is, those animals which can see during the night time, they are known as nocturnal. Clear? Now, uh, they have sense organs. They have got compound eyes with the help of which they are able to sense the things, okay? You have seen that cockroaches are having the antenna, right? So, this antenna, they provide signals to them. They also have the sensory organs and also they have got the nerves in the form of ganglion bodies. 
so which help them to um, uh, sense the things now talking about these cockroaches as you know that they are mostly what they are mostly black or brown in color right now have you seen this red or green color cockroaches or yellow color cockroaches yes we can see this red yellow or green color cockroaches even so where they are they are basically present in the tropical regions okay so in the tropical region you will find again different varieties of cockroaches different colors like red green yellow all these colors you will find in the tropical regions so this is all about it so let's see the yeah taxonomic classification as i have already said that it belongs to kingdom animalia right so it belongs to kingdom animalia then phylum orthopoda isn't it phylum orthopoda class insecta then order dictatotera okay then family blattidae okay then genus periplaneta and species americana so these things we have to remember this is the taxonomic classification of the cockroach next see these are all the characteristics which i have already explained that cockroaches are brown or black in color that is they have black or brown bodies so you can note it down they belong to which phylum they belong to the phylum orthopoda and they belong to the class insecta right so they can be bright yellow red or green in color and where we will find it we are uh, we can find it in the tropical regions okay we can find this type of cockroaches in the tropical regions so what is the size of the cockroach the size of the cockroach it varies okay it can be 1/4 inches to 3 inches okay this is the size of the cockroach 1/4 inches to 3 inches that is 0.6 to 7.6 cm okay 0.6 to 7.6 cm it can vary they have long antenna so in the cockroach you will be looking into this type of structure isn't it so in the body of the cockroach if this is the head these are the eyes these are what these are the antenna right so these are the antenna which is basically for what it is basically for sensing or signaling they use this for sensing the things or signaling right so yeah and they have got a legs and flat extension of the upper body wall they that conceals the head now this cockroach um, sometimes uh, you will see that when by mistake okay you will um, you will uh, uh, that is the, by mistake you will kill the cockroach and you will see that it will be flat isn't it so their body that is their body is dorso ventrally okay they have got dorso ventrally flat body okay so they have dorso ventrally flat body and they are nocturnal omnivores that live in damp places so where you will find basically the cockroaches basically in the damp areas or in the moist areas they prefer the dark area okay so they prefer dark places for the survival so this is all about it next let us see the structure of the cockroach so basically the body of the cockroach is divided into three parts that is head thorax and abdomen so the body of the cockroach is basically divided into three parts that is head thorax and abdomen now if i draw the diagram of the cockroach here so see these are the eyes okay this is the antenna so this part is the thorax and from here is the abdomen in the abdomen they have got 10 segments okay these are anal cerci and these are the style okay so in the thorax they will be having legs legs are present in the thorax so they have got three pairs of legs like this they will be having legs and they have got 10 abdomen 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 
one more ten. Okay. So these are the eyes. They have got two types of eyes. One is simple eye and another one is compound eyes. So this region is, this is the head portion where the eyes and the antenna are present. This part is the thorax. Okay. Where the legs are present and this part is the abdomen. All right. So, in the abdomen, they will be having 10 segments, okay? In the abdomen, they have got 10 segments. How many segments? They have got 10 segments in the abdomen. And they also have got wings, okay? Let me take this blue color. They also have got wings. So, here they will be having the wings. So, talking about their thorax, their thorax are again divided into three types. Prothorax, then mesothorax and metathorax. So, their thorax are again divided into three types that is prothorax, mesothorax and metathorax and they have got how many uh, segments in the abdomen? They have got 10 segments, okay? And these are the wings. So, this wings, what is the function of the wings? These wings, they help in flying, okay? So, in their thorax, they have got, uh, that is mesothorax, okay? The wings which are present in the mesothorax, they are generally long, okay? And they are feathery, okay? They are, they are feathery. They are feathery and they are long and they do not help in flying. They do not help in flying. But the wings which are present in the metathorax, in the metathorax also they have got wings, but these wings are small. Alright, so the wings which are present in the metathorax, they are small and these wings are basically responsible for flying. Clear? So the wings which are present in the metathorax only, they are using this for flying and these are supporting wings which are present in the mesothorax. Is that clear? So this is all about the thorax and these cockroaches, they can fly at a faster rate. They fly very fast, isn't it? So, next, let us learn about, uh, see this is, the, uh, this is the diagram of the cockroach where you can clearly see the head, right? And these are the compound eyes. So, as you can see, these are the eyes, right? So, they have got compound eyes. So, in the compound eyes, again, they have got small, small hexagonal structure, okay? So, this hexagonal structure, it helps in formation of the mosaic image. So, the images which they are forming with the help of these eyes, okay? The images which they form with the help of these eyes are not very much clear. They have got low resolution, okay? They have low resolution. They form mosaic image, okay? The images are... Mosaic image. <clears throat> Not very much clear. So see, this part, okay, is known as protonum. So this area is known as protonum. And here you can see, this is the mesothorax, okay. So let me draw here. So this area which you can see, this is the head. So now here you can see this part. This is known as protonum or prothorax. This area is known as mesothorax. All right. And under the mesothorax is the metathorax. Is that clear? So these are the three uh, thorax which are present here as you can see. So here you can see that near the thorax. Okay. Up to this, you can see the wings, right? So, uh, sorry, up to this, you can see the legs, isn't it? So, this near the thorax only, the legs are present. The legs are present only in the thorax. And after that, from here, you can see the abdomen, right? So, here, 
the legs will be present somewhere here. And all these are the abdomen portion. All these are the abdomen. So they have got total how many segments? They have got total 10 segments in their abdomen. So see, so they, these are the wings, that is the hind wings, okay? Hind wing which is present in the metathorax. So see, this is hind wing which is generally small, isn't it? So they use this hind wing for flying and this is generally small, okay? So see, these are the wings. They have got two pairs of wings, okay? How many pairs? They have got two pairs of wings. So two, uh, that is uh, one pair is long feathery wing and another pair is small one which is just behind the abdomen which we cannot see. That helps them in the flying. These are known as the hind wings. So this is all about it. Now let us learn the types of thorax in detail. So as I said that how many types of thorax are there? So there are three types of thorax, right? What are the three types of thorax? One is pre-thorax. Yeah, one is prothorax. Sorry, one is prothorax. Then another one is mesothorax. Then the last one is metathorax, right? So these are the three thorax. Now let us see the structure of the cockroach and the thorax in detail. So see the cockroaches, they will be having generally the triangular head, okay? Their head will be triangular. So they will be facing downside, right? So they are generally uh, hypogenathus, okay? Their jaw is facing towards downside. So they are hypogenathus. So here somewhere, they will be having the thorax, okay? Just imagine this is the thorax which they have. And again, their thorax is divided into Yeah, again the thorax, so these are the three thorax, right? So this one is, the first one is the uh, prothorax, second one is the mesothorax, and third one is the metathorax, right? So this is prothorax, this is meso, and this is meta, right? So after the thorax, what they have? After the thorax, they have got the abdomen, right? So this is the abdomen. So see their abdomen has having uh, how many segments? 10 segments. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10, right? So see this are the abdomen. This portion is abdomen. So these are the three thorax. And in the mesothorax, they will be having long wings, okay? So they will be having long wings where in the mesothorax and these long wings are, uh, wings are feathery. And in the metathorax, what they have? In the metathorax, they have got small wings. These wings are known as the hind wings, okay? So they are basically responsible for flying. Another is there at the back side, okay? So they have got two pairs of uh, two pairs of wings. So see their head is triangular, right? So it is uh, generally their head is very much flexible. You have seen that the cockroaches, they will be moving their head, right? So their heads are very, very much flexible. And they have got here like this antenna, let's say, okay? So they have antenna which provides them a signal which acts as a sensory organs, right? So these eyes are known as the these eyes are known as the compound eyes, okay? These eyes are known as compound eyes. So, this compound eyes, they helps in uh, sensing the things. And what is this? This is the head. So, this is the thorax. And you can see near the thorax, the legs are present, isn't it? So, here again, you will see like this structures. These are known as anal cerci. And in case of male, you will see the 
style okay you will see the style so the style also it acts as a sensory organ the style is present only in case of the male cockroaches okay so with the help of this style we can distinguish between the male and the female cockroaches so this is all about it so the body of the cockroach okay they have got a uh, thick uh, covering or thick cell wall okay it is made up of chitin okay c h i t i n so this chitin is the cell wall that is the cell wall the outer layer of the body okay they have got a thick cell wall which is known as chitin the chitin provides the protection okay so this is all about it next let us learn the digestive system of the cockroach so so far we have seen the morphology of the cockroach where we have learned the structure of the cockroach right so we, we have seen that uh, what is the various habitat color of the cockroach where the leaf right and we have seen the taxonomic classification too and also we have learned the structure of the cockroach and what are the various types of thorax and how the abdomen is divided so that was all about what that was all about the morphology of the cockroach how it is that is the physical appearance of it now let us move into the anatomy of the cockroach where you will be learning about the digestive system of the cockroach the circulatory system of the cockroach the respiratory system and also we will be covering the uh, excretion that is the excretory system and the reproductive system so first let us learn the digestive system of uh, cockroach so the alimentary canal as we have an alimentary canal right similarly the cockroaches also they have the alimentary canal so it is divided into three regions that is foregut midgut and hindgut so the alimentary canal of the cockroach is divided into foregut midgut and hindgut so as you can see in the picture so let us learn the uh, digestive system so see in case of cockroach so their digestive system if this is the outer body so let's say here here is the fernix so near the fernix will be the salivary glands so this is the fernix this is the fernix okay these are the salivary glands these are the salivary glands which secrete the saliva then from the fernix they will be having ossifagus this is known as ossifagus okay that is the food pipe which helps in transportation of food so then they will be having like this structure okay this structure is known as the crop okay so in the crop what happens the cockroach collects the food okay it keeps it in the crop so basically crop is used for storing okay storage of food now after the crop they have got the gizzard now what is the function of this gizzard gizzard are basically they don't have uh, like teeth like us right so they need to break down the food so gizzard helps in the masticulation of the food okay that is the breaking down of the food so basically what happens the masticulation masticulation of food takes place in the gizzard clear then here what happens after that they have got till the gizzard okay till the gizzard this part is known as the fore uh, foregut okay so as we have seen that it is divided into three types right foregut midgut and hindgut so till the gizzard up to the gizzard it is known as foregut so from here this one is the midgut okay so this part is the midgut so here near the midgut they will be having like this six to eight tubules okay these tubules are known as hepatic sacs okay so these tubules are known as what these tubules are known as hepatic okay 
hepatic sac. So they are generally six to eight tubules near the geyser okay just between the foregut and the midgut there are the uh, there are hepatic cicae what is the function of this hepatic cicae this hepatic cicae it helps in the process of digestion and absorption okay it helps in the process of digestion and and absorption absorption of what absorption of Food. So this hepatic cicae it helps in the process of digestion and absorption of food. Now this is what this is the midgut. So now after the midgut, okay, after the midgut, what is present? After the midgut, they will be having this long structures, okay? That is the hindgut will start. All right. So so there they will be having the ileum ileum then they will be having the colon then they will be having rectum is that clear so in the mean gun they will be having ileum colon and rectum so in between the mid gut and the hin gut they again have so many thin thread like tubules okay these are known as Malpighian tubules, okay? What are this? These are known as, these tubules are known as Malpighian tubules. Now, how many Malpighian tubules are present? They have around 150 Malpighian tubules. And this Malpighian tubules, what is the function of it? They are responsible for the process of excretion, okay? They remove the waste materials from the body of the cockroach. So here, so the cockroach will be uh, releasing the excretory products in the form of urea, okay? The cockroach releases the excretory products in the form of urea and they are released with the help of this Malphigian tubules. So they are, uh, there are around 150 Malphigian tubules which helps in the release of this uh, waste products from the body of the cockroach. Is that clear? So uh, the, uh, yeah, this all part of the body that is the outer layer okay everywhere it is covered with chitin except the midgut okay except the midgut all the uh, body of the cockroach even the alimentary canal is also covered with chitin but in the midgut the chitin is absent so this is all about the digestive system of cockroach as you can see in this picture also so this is from your ncrt this yellow portion which you can see near this you can see some tubules right so this is the malphigian tubules which is responsible for what which is responsible for removing the waste materials from the body so this is what we have learned yeah next let us look into the circulatory system now when we talk about circulatory system we have learned that there are two types of circulatory system right what are the two types one is open circulatory system another one is your closed circulatory system isn't it so in case of cockroach which type of circulatory system they have they do not have blood vessels right so they have what they have open circulatory system so in case of cockroach the circulatory system that they have is open circulatory system now what happens in case of open circulatory system in case of open circulatory system all the organs they are but directly they are but they are B A T H, okay? They are but directly into the blood. They are but directly into the blood. So they do not have the blood vessels. So for the circulatory system, what we need? We need a heart, we need blood, and what we need? We need the blood vessels. These are the three things, right? So, in case of cockroach, they have got heart, okay? They have got 
heart and do you know how many chambers they have in the heart yes they have 13 chambers okay they have 13 chambers in their heart so they have 13 chamber heart now in case of this um, cockroach their blood is white in color so it is known as hemo lymph all right so their blood is uh, their blood is uh, white in color so it is known as hemolymph now let us see the uh, circulation how it takes place so if this is the body ahead uh, of the cockroach okay so let's say this is the body all right so here they will be having how many chambered heart they have got 13 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 okay so when the heart is present their heart is present at the back side of the body okay at the back side of the body their heart is present so the circulation of blood it takes place from the back side to the front side so the back side what we call as posterior and isn't it so the back side what we call is a uh, posterior and right and the front side we call as anterior and is that clear so in the anterior and they have got iota okay they have got iota which is responsible for bring in circulation of the blood uh, to all the parts of the body so from the back side the blood is being circulated that is from the posterior end to the anterior end clear from the posterior end to the anterior end so here as you can see they have got 13 chambered heart there is small small pores okay through the small small pores the blood is being circulated so it is known as ostium okay so this small small pores are known as ostium so through this ostium the circulation of the blood takes place in the various chambers so again they have got different sinuses so this is the head right so this is known as head sinus this part is the cardial this is known as pericardial sinus this heart this heart part is known as pericardial sinus okay then here they will be having the nerves so this is known as perineural sinus then the organs okay this organs uh, which are not visible okay so they are known as peri visceral sinus so they have got again different sinuses so the blood is transferred first to the head okay so through the iota so this one is the anterior iota through which the blood is being circulated. So from the uh, pericardial sinus, the blood will come first where? Blood will come to the head, okay? From the head, it goes where? It goes to the perineural sinus, right? So from the perineural sinus, it goes to the perivisceral uh, sinus, okay? And again, from the perivisceral sinus, it goes back to the heart. Is that clear? So this is how the circulation takes place. So first what happens first the blood comes from the pericardial sinus right. Then where the heart uh, where the blood goes the blood goes to the head sinus isn't it. Then after the head sinus where the blood goes it goes to the perineural sinus okay peri neural sinus then from the peri neural sinus it goes to the peri visceral sinus 
visceral sinus from the visceral sinus it goes to the again to the heart is that clear so this is how the circulation takes place in case of the in case of the cockroach so let us see what is written in your textbook the blood vascular system of the cockroach is an open type as we have seen that the circulation is open type right so the blood vessels are poorly developed and open into the space so they have got poorly developed blood vessels and all the uh, organs are but directly into the blood so visceral organs that is located in the hemocoid okay hemo and are but in the blood okay all the organs are directly but into the blood so in case of this cockroach they use the blood okay they use the blood only for the process of transportation of nutrients okay only for the transportation of what transportation of nutrients they do not use the blood for the process of respiration so in case of cockroach they are not using the blood for the process of respiration so they use the blood only for the process of transportation of food because why because they do not have properly developed blood vessels so they cannot use the blood for the gaseous exchange that is for the process of respiration so the heart of the cockroach consists of the elongated muscle tube lying along mid dorsal line of the thorax and the abdomen one more thing okay in case of the cockroach they have got one special muscles they are known as alary muscles so as you can see in this picture okay so this are the this are the muscles okay this muscles are known as they are thin, uh, thin thread like structures okay which provide support isn't it so these muscles are the special muscles which are present in case of the cockroach and they are known as the alary muscles okay so they have got a special muscle that is known as alary muscle that helps in the pumping of blood so as you can see this small small chambers these are the various chambers of the heart so they have got how many chambered heart they have got 13 chambered heart right Yes, it is differentiated into funnel-shaped chambers with ostia on either side. As I have said that this ostia or ostium are nothing but the small, small uh, holes or the pores. Okay, this ostia or what? These are the pores through which the circulation of blood takes place. So yes, blood. form sinus and the heart through ostia and is pumped anteriorly to the sinuses again so which i have explained that through the ostia what happens the blood enters that is from the posterior end that is the pericardial sinus to the head sinus and again it will be going to the neural sinus then all the visceral organs and again it will be back to the heart right that is to the uh, to the ostia it will be moving to the heart so this is how the circulation takes place through the ostia okay this ostia are nothing but these are the small small pores all right yes next let us learn the respiration in cockroach how do the res uh, respiration takes place do they have uh, this um, uh, lungs no right they do not have this the uh, nose and they do not respire with the help of skin also so how they respire they respire with the help of the trachea okay so the respiration takes place with the help of trachea yes so the respiration takes place with the help of trachea so in case of cockroach in case of cockroach there is direct there is direct exchange of the gases okay so let's say this is the trachea okay so the exchange of gases takes place with the help of tracheoles okay the exchange of gases tracheoles so the exchange of gases mainly takes place with the help of tracheoles so the o2 and the co2 is directly released to the cells okay is directly released to the cells they do not use blood so here blood 
is not used okay they do not use blood for the process of respiration they directly exchange that is uh, the oxygen and carbon dioxide to the cells okay that is there is direct exchange of gases takes place direct exchange of o2 and co2 taking place in case of the respiration of uh, cockroach now in case of this cockroaches they have got small small spiracles okay in their body they have got a pair of spiracles so this spiracles they are helping in the process of gaseous exchange so these are known as spiracles so they have generally 10 to 20 spiracles okay they have 10 to 20 spiracles the spiracles are responsible for the process of gaseous exchanges okay now they have got special muscles so the uh, opening and closing of the spiracles takes place with the help of spinster muscle okay so they have got special muscle that helps in the opening and the closing of the spiracles and they have got 10 to 20 spiracles and they respire with the help of trachea okay so this is how the respiration takes place so the respiratory system consists of a network of trachea as you can see how they respire with the help of trachea and they open through 10 pairs of small holes called spiracles so as i have said that how the trachea open they open with the help of small small holes or the pores what are these holes or pores known as they are known as spiracles they have generally 10 pairs or 10 to 20 spiracles the spiracles opens with the help of which muscle with the help of spinster muscle okay yes yeah so which is present on the lateral side of the body so thin branching tubes okay carry oxygen from ear to all the parts of the body the opening of the spiracles is regulated by the spinster okay spinster muscle and exchange of gases takes place with the help of tracheoles with the help of tracheoles by diffusion so this is all about it so next is excretion so cockroaches also release the excretory products in the form of urea so as we have already learned that the cockroaches they have got the uh, tubules right so in the digestive system you have seen that near the hindgut and the mid, mid gut they have got so many malphigian tubules isn't it this malphigian tubules are thin thread like structures right so this malphigian tubules are responsible for the excretion okay so how the excretion takes place it takes place with the help of this malphigian tubules okay malphigian tubules all right so this malphigian tubules it helps in the process of excretion so each malphigian tubule is lined by glandular and ciliated cells so in the malphigian tubule they have two types of cells so what are the two types of cells present one is your glandular cells and another is the ciliated cells so these are the two types of cells so this glandular cells what it does it helps or it collects what it collects the urea okay and the ciliated cells what it does it transports okay it transfer it transfers the urea okay it transfers the urea uh, uh, from the body parts to the uh, that is to the uh, malphigian tubules for the process of excretion so they also have got special fat bodies in them so they also have got special fat bodies okay so they also have some special fat bodies so this fat bodies also have the capacity to absorb what to absorb the urea or the excretory products so they also have fat bodies which helps in the process of excretion now what this fat bodies do okay this fat bodies absorb all the urea and they keep all the urea in them okay in those cells 
So in that way, they also help in the process of excretion, like nephrocytes and the uroscos glands, okay? These are the glands which help in the process of excretion. So what is the main function of this malfusion tubes? To absorb what? To absorb the nitrogenous waste product that is the urea, okay? That is the urea, okay? And convert them into uric acid and which is being excreted through the hindgut, okay? Which is being excreted through the hindgut, through the rectum, all right? So therefore, these insects are urico telic okay these insects are uricotelic because why because they release the excretory products in the form of uric acid that's why these insects are known as uricotelic yeah next let us learn the nervous system so cockroaches also have the nervous system their nerves are present in the form of ganglion bodies okay so their nerves are present in the form of ganglion bodies now they have they have pair of dorsal nerves okay they have got two dorsal nerves and they have nine ganglion bodies okay how many they have nine ganglion bodies yes Three ganglion bodies are located in the thorax and six are located in the abdomen, okay? So, three ganglia, it lies in the thorax and six are in the abdomen. So, if I draw the figure of the cockroach, okay? So, suppose this is the thorax. So, here, three ganglion bodies and here in the uh, abdomen, there will be six ganglion bodies located and in their head also they have the they have ganglion bodies okay they have three ganglion bodies in their head also okay they have three ganglion bodies in their head also head has got three ganglion body so because of this okay if you cut the head if you cut the head of the cockroach it can survive okay it can survive why because it has got three ganglion bodies which provides signal to the eyes and the antenna. Is that clear? So it has got three ganglion bodies in the head also. So the, yeah, you can see three in the thorax and six in the abdomen. So the nervous system of cockroach consists of a series of few segmentally arranged ganglia joined by the paired longitudinal connective tissues on the ventral side so basically they contain what their their nerves are present in the form of the ganglion bodies okay and they have a pair of what they have a pair of nerves okay they have got two nerve cords the nervous system of cockroach is spread throughout the body all over the body they have got nerves okay and the head holds a bit of nervous system while the rest is situated to the ventral part of its body as i have said that in the head also they have got ganglion bodies so they have got three ganglion bodies in the head so see so how can the cockroach survive even if uh, it is um, uh, if the head is cut or how it survives without the head because it has got what three ganglion bodies in the head okay in the head region okay here it has got three ganglion bodies which provide signal to the eyes and the antenna so these are known as supra osteophagal ganglion okay so in the brain they have got three ganglion bodies they have got three ganglion bodies what are these known as these are known as supra osteophagal ganglion so if the head of the cockroach is cut it will still survive for as long as one week okay for one week for one week it can survive how it can survive it has got three ganglion bodies in the brain which is represented by supra osteophagal ganglion which supplies nerves to the antenna and the compound eyes so this is the reason why the cockroach can survive without head for one week clear up to this so so far we have learned about what we have learned about the digestive system isn't it then we have seen the circulatory system of the cockroach where we have uh, we have learned about that cockroach has got 13 chambered heart and also we have learned about the 
respiratory system and we have covered the nervous system. Now what else? The cockroach, how the sense? They also can sense the things, right? They also have sensory organs. So let us learn the sensory organs of the cockroach. So if this is the mouth, as you know that they have got triangular head, right? The head of the cockroach is triangular, isn't it? So they have got two eyes, one is compound eyes and another one is simple eyes, clear? So this one, the big one, okay, the big one is the compound eye, the big one is compound eye and the small one is the simple eye, this is the simple eye. So in the compound eye, they have got 2000 hexagonal structures. Okay, 2000 hexagonal structures that uh, it helps in the formation of mosaic images. Okay, so what are these hexagonal structures known as? The small, small structures are known as omatidia. Okay, so these small, small structures are known as omatidia. All right. So, this omatidium are what? These are the hexagonal structure, okay? These are the hexagonal structures and how many hexagonal structures they have? Yes, they have. How many hexagonal structures? They have got 2,000, okay? They have got 2,000 small, small eyes you can say, okay? So, yes, with the help of this omatidinium, which is present in the compound eye, they are able to form the images, okay? They are able to see the things during the night time. So, they are able to form the image. So, that image is having low resolution. The mosaic image means they have got low resolution. They form what image? They form mosaic image. So this having what? This is having very, very low resolution. So this has low resolution. But it is okay for the cockroaches, okay? They can identify the thing properly with the help of this uh, forming the mosaic images. They have got low resolution. And also what they have, only the eyes they have, no. They also have the antenna right they also have antenna this antenna is also responsible for sensing the things okay so with the help of this they are able to sense the things that is with the help of eyes and with the help of antenna yes so in the cockroaches the sense organs are the antenna eyes and also they have got the uh, they have got the labial pulps and anal cerci and the maxillary pulps. Okay, as I have said, the, uh, as I have showed, which one is the anal cerci? They are present in the downside. Okay, these are the anal cerci. They are also responsible for sensing. Okay, they have got maxillary pulps, which is present near the mouth in the lower jaw and the labial pulps, okay? And the compound eyes are situated at the dorsal surface of the head, okay? So near the head, you will see the um, eyes are situated, okay? And each eye consists of about 2000 hexagonal omatidium, which we have already said. And that forms what? That forms the mosaic image or mosaic vision, which is having the less resolution, isn't it? So, because of which the cockroach is able to see the things during the night time and they are what? They are nocturnal, right? They are nocturnal, that is, they can see the things during the night time. Yes, they have nocturnal vision. So next, let us learn the reproduction in the cockroach. So this is the last topic which you are going to learn in the uh, this topic. So cockroaches, they are dioecious. That means what dioecious means? They have got separate male and female reproductive organ. We can easily identify them looking into the reproductive organs. So they are dioecious. That is male and female reproductive organs are separate, right? And they have uh, both sexes, well-developed reproductive organs. So let us learn first the male reproductive organ yes so look into it yeah where it is 
yes male reproduction in cockroaches so look, uh, look into the diagram of this okay if we look into the internal structure the reproductive system of the male cockroach you will find that they have a pair of testes okay as you can see this is what this is the testes okay so they have got how many testes uh, they have got a pair of testes okay and from the testes what happens the sperms are released okay so sperms are basically stored in the seminal vesicle so as you can see this mushroom shape like structure isn't it so this mushroom shape like structure is nothing but the seminal vesicle where the sperms are stored okay so from the testes a long thin structure that is known as the vas different uh, that is known as the vas difference right so it goes through the ejaculatory duct so this yellow portion which you can see this is the ejaculatory duct right so this um, uh, vast difference it brings the uh, it brings the sperms and it releases through the ejaculatory duct all right and the sperms are stored in the seminal vessel which is mushroom shaped structure so see the male reproductive system consists of a pair of testes and where it is located this is located in the fourth to the sixth segment okay so as you can see as you have seen that they have got 10 10 segments in the abdomen isn't it so which segment it is located in the fourth to sixth segment the testes is located in the fourth to sixth segment of the abdomen all right yes So from each testis there is a thin vas deferens which opens into ejaculatory duct through the seminal vessels through the seminal yeah vesicle so as you can see this testis through the testis a thin tube like structure is uh, opening right and it is um, uh, opening where in the ejaculatory duct through the seminal vesicle so the e uh, this ejaculatory duct it opens into the male gonopore situated ventral to the anus okay so where it will open it will open to the male gonopore okay so this ejaculatory duct which is yellow in color it is opening where it is opening to the male gonopore okay so somewhere here okay it will open into the male gonopore yes a characteristic mushroom shaped gland is present in the 6 to 7th abdomen 6 uh, to 7th segment so in the 6 to 7th segment as you can see the seminal vesicle, uh, vesicle right so it is mushroom shaped structure okay where the sperms are stored so see this is present in the 6 to 7th abdominal segment which functions as the accessory reproductive glands and the sperms are stored in the seminal vesicle as i have said that where the sperms are stored it is stored in the seminal vesicles and glued together in the form of bundles called spermatophores which are uh, spores which are uh, released during the time of mating or copulation so this is how the sperms are being produced and stored and released in case of the uh, male cockroaches now let us look into the female reproductive organs so as you can see here in the picture they also have a pair of ovary right so in the ovary what is being produced ova is being produced right so this ova are released with the help of uh, this um vagina as you can see this is the common oviduct or vagina through which the ova is being released where it is being released into the genital chambers okay or into the genital pouch so where the ova is released it is released in the genital chambers so see where it is located it is located in the second to the sixth segment okay second to the sixth segment of the abdomen so the female reproductive system consists of two large ovaries they also have a pair of ovaries two large ovaries lying naturally in the second to the sixth segment and each ovary uh, it consists of eight ovarian tubules or ovarios so how many ovarian tubules it has got eight ovarian tubules which is consisting of what which is consisting of a chain of ova this ovarios it is consisting of ova okay and uh, it produces the ova which is being opening to the genital 
chambers and they also have a pair of spermotheca uh, spermotheca is present in the sixth segment which opens in the genital chamber so they also have a pair of spermotheca so here you can see okay so this is spermotheca yeah this is spermotheca as you can see this is spermotheca right so where it opens it opens in the genital chamber okay so it opens here this spermotheca also opens in the genital chamber so this is all about what this is all about the female reproductive uh, um, uh, uh, organ in case of cockroach and this transfer of sperms how the sperms are transferred to the female body through the spermatophores okay through the spermatophores the sperms are transferred and um, how the fertilization takes place generally the cockroach are oviparous okay oviparous so the development of eggs will be taking place outside the body okay so they are forming what the fertilized eggs are forming a capsule which is known as utheka and utheka is generally dark reddish or blackish brown in color measuring 8 millimeter long you will see uh, in your kitchens or somewhere okay the dark colors uh, uh, eggs these are nothing but the eggs of the cockroaches so they are generally yeah, oviparous they lay eggs outside okay these are known as utheka so this is all about it. So uh, in today's class, we have covered the morphology and the anatomy of cockroach, right? Where we have learned about the uh, structure of the cockroach and also we have learned the um, alimentary canal, right? And the circulation and also at last we have learned the reproductive organs of the cockroach. So if you find this session uh, useful, do like it and also share it with others. And don't forget to visit to our website where you will be getting all the PDF notes of this um, topic. So uh, till then, um, take care. I will meet you in my next class where we'll be learning about the morphology and anatomy of the frog. So take care and bye-bye.